So welcome everybody to episode five of Black Food Tales. Um, why don't you tell the audience about who you are, a bit about yourself, and um, yeah, we take it from there. Okay, my name is Princess, and uh, I've got um, a page. I've got yeah. a blog called um, Let's Cook with L. So L is not my name. <laughs> so okay. L means her. So um, basically what I do, I promote Congolese food, uh, African food in general, just showing people easy recipes uh, to cook, you know, authentic Congolese food. That is pretty much what I do online. And I've got a YouTube channel uh, sharing the, the, you know, the recipes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, I just started a blog as well, just, you know, uh, sharing the culture and just, you know, put my touch into it, like where I came from and stuff like that. And I was born in Congo. Okay. Um, I came to the UK at the age of 10. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. That brings us up to today, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, L, what is that? French? L is in French, so it means okay. her. Okay, and they speak, well, I might. I should have uh, found this out. They speak French in Congo, right? They speak French in Congo and also Lingala. There's loads of languages that we speak in Congo, but French and Lingala, um, I think it's pretty much the main language that, you know, people speaking in, in Congo. Because it did throw me off, like, when I was trying to research, like, and I was looking at your blog and stuff, I was thinking, yeah. okay, Elf, but that's not her name, though. I like, know, I just trying to... I know. Do you know what? A lot, loads of people always calling me L. Even though sometimes when I start my video, I yeah. just say, it, like, my name is this. Yeah, you know, yeah, my yeah, name is yeah, Princess yeah. or Princess in French. But people's always calling me Elf. I don't really mind it. Okay. But I don't think I've even... I don't think I mentioned that, mm -mm -mm. the real meaning of it, you know, like okay. elle means her in French. Because I didn't want it to be less cook with her. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I want it to be a bit, you know, better. Less cook with her. So the fact that you're, I guess, mixing like French uh, in the name or the, the title mm. of your, your blog or everything that you're doing within your cooking style, is there, is there a pinch of maybe French influence at all or? Well, I'm not quite sure, but what I know, us Congolese people, we eat a lot of bread. Mm -hmm. Do you know French? They love the baguette mm. and stuff like that. So that could be, but when it comes to other dishes, I don't think so. But in terms of the name, the reason why I use French is because we speak French in Congo. Do you mm. know what I mean? So I want it to be a bit more authentic. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it just sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing think? wrong with it. It, sounded, like, it sounds good to me. Exactly. Like, so. so that's the reason why I thought let's cook with L yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of her. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, perhaps we should uh, fill the audience in about like how our paths crossed and stuff like that. So we originally met at uh, a range of meetup. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the meetup was designed to, I guess meet other like-minded you know foodies or mm -hmm. people that are interested in like african or caribbean cuisine mm -hmm. and on one of those i arranged a tour where we'd you know visit different restaurants and this particular week uh we visited a niche down in lewisham yeah that yellow fries oh my gosh and that fanta that is fanta <laughs> remember i told yeah, you yeah, 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 i was yeah. like that is fanta the color of it is orange it's just so authentic i was like give me some where'd you get your fanta from remember? so it was the fanta that came in the bottle right yeah it's so, so good for those listening that are you know you know for those listening that perhaps never left the country never had a chance to been to 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 anywhere um i was about to say anywhere in africa but i know in um even in like Jamaica, I haven't been there in maybe over 10 years, but mm. they had like bottles and like the soft drink bottles are mm. probably still like that. There is even now, but for people that I guess haven't left and all they know is Fanta in a can, how would you describe that kind of Fanta? One thing I always say is authentic. Authentic, you know? yeah. And okay. the color of it, you know, orange is not yellow. Mm. Orange is orange. Mm. So when I want to drink my Fanta, I want it to look orange. I feel like... Um, it tastes better, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you have the taste, it's just so tasty. But when it comes to like the canned Fantas, it's just, it's not orange, it's mm, yellow, mm, you mm. know, but yeah, normal Fanta. It's funny you say that because like, I remember like when I spent some time in Ghana, like they had like Fanta lemon mm. and I miss that. Like I'm never, I don't, I don't see it here at all. Actually I have. Really? Yeah, yeah in a can. It. Yeah, I had a um, Fanta lemon before. I didn't really like it. You didn't like it no. at all. No, 
I don't know why. So well, wait, did you have the can one? Though? I had the can one. Okay, then maybe we need to go authentic. Maybe if I go to Ghana. Oops. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, it, maybe if you go to, to, to Ghana um, and try it there, then yeah, who knows? Yeah, if I go to Ghana and try it, uh, the Fanta lemon, mm-hmm. I'll probably like it. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this jollof then. So you obviously enjoyed it. Um, for those that can see the camera with the big smile on your face. Yeah. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about your jollof experience. What do you think? That, you know what, that jollof was good. It's a bit, you know what, when I when I went there, remember, did I, remember I told you, I was like, the jollof rice, it tastes a bit like the way I make it. Mm-hmm. And it, it was just so tasty. It was like full of flavor. It was moist. It was just delicious. That mm-hmm. Nigerian jollof, I must say, is the one. I'm so sorry, you got <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know you guys, you know, beef between Nigerian jollof and Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the way I learned to cook jollof rice is yeah. from a Nigerian when I was in uni. So um, it just tastes amazing. You know, saying that I need to, what I really need to do is like have like every nation's jollof sat down next to each other because it might sound bad, like even me trying to do this whole foodie thing. Yeah, I can't tell yeah. the difference right yeah, now. Yeah. I need to sit each one down yeah, because think, every mm. time I had it, there's been like a big gap between yeah. each one. Yeah. So, um, so you're, you're shouting out for repping Nigeria right Nigerian, now. Nigerian, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nigerian jollof rice is so good. It's so tasty. Like mm. from that restaurant, Inish, oh my gosh, they just serve the best jollof rice I've ever tasted. It is good. It is amazing. It is good. Mm-hmm. So while we're on like restaurants and stuff like that, like Congolese restaurants, um, when I looked on Google, they're, they're quite few and far in between. Yeah, there, there's not a lot, but there are a few. You have, uh, can I mention them? Yeah, but like shut them o- out. Okapi, and uh, there's another one uh, which is called, I can't really remember the name of it. Um, my sister has been there, and I've got a few family members been there before. It's just, you know, they mentioned that it's really good. But as you said, there's not a lot, you know, even if there is, there, there's just a few that I know of. I don't know a lot of Congolese restaurants out there, to be honest. Why do you think there's um, a shortage? Do you know what? I think... I think it's probably they're starting and they're just not succeeding in a way and uh, they just end up closing the shops. Because I remember I remember when I was younger, I've been to a few Congolese restaurants, but now that they're, they're just not there anymore. What do you, where do you think they went wrong? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Do they're you think it's the, the demand, the, the service, or is it? That, that the people aren't ready for this kind of cuisine or I think this is, is it's time people are ready for you know African cuisine uh, Congolese food people are ready but I'm not quite sure the reason why they're not in a lot of Congolese restaurants out there I'm not quite sure but it could be the demand as well I was watching the news the other day they mentioned that um, people are, um, are buying takeaways more than going out to restaurants. That could be the reason why, because we're in the generation that, you know, people are going out less, they're going more uh, bars and stuff like that. So um, they're ordering takeaways, so based on the news, basically. So that could be the reason why, I'm not pretty sure. Hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, I know, like, I've seen, like, through like Uber Eats, Deliveroo and stuff like that, that's really helped, um, I guess, people that not exactly cook from home, but even cook in commercial kitchens. But yeah. it means that they to sell their food, they don't need to like worry about like the rent in the whole space. Yeah. Serving customers there and then they can start businesses of just selling people directly to to yeah. them at home and stuff like that. So who knows what I guess the future will hold. Um, but I think the time is now. The time I think, is now. I yeah. think not just with food alone. I think like there's a real resurgence, not resurgence, I don't know where, what the right word is, but there mm. is a big interest right now, definitely in like African culture. Yeah, definitely. You yeah. know, um, you know, look look at Black Panther. Oh yeah, Wakanda forever. A hundred percent. I'm just saying like that. Hun- exactly. Wakanda forever. Like yeah. I saw that film twice. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I saw it three times. You saw it three yeah. times, yeah? I saw it three times. I love that movie. Okay, Definitely, okay, okay, okay. three times, yeah. You know what's <laughs> mad? Like, so, like, my my good friend, like, he's into like the whole 
he's in the like the music industry and mm-hmm. stuff and he knew an actor that more or less bought like all the tickets for the cinema in Peckham so when we went in there like it was just full of like literally just full of like black people all come like yeah. they would like yeah. dapped out like dressed like, up yeah. dressed up to the yeah. T do you know what I mean yeah. like even I dug out some like the cheeky looking mm-hmm. thing and put yeah. that on um but when we got in there, everybody was cheering like, ah, like really? at the point in time, I was like, whoa, this is too much. I'm trying to enjoy the film. Like uh. someone be dying. Hopefully I'm not spoiling it for mm. no one. But <laughs> yeah, but someone, someone, something bad will happen. Yeah, People are yeah. cheering and stuff. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking like, whoa, relax. But you know what? I went to see it for the second time. Yeah. It didn't have that. And it was like, I missed that all of a sudden. Yeah, like it, it did feel mean. nice to have yeah. something that. Um, that touched you. You know what? Because mm. for me, that film, when I left there, it's the first time I've ever left a film and I felt, I felt like, I don't know what the word is, like my chest felt big kind of thing. Do you know what? You're not the only one. Like, I've, uh, some of my friends actually went to see uh, Black Panther. They felt like that. Mm. They felt like, um, they just, you know, like, oh, I don't know how to, to say it. They just felt like, you know, I can do, you know, I can do anything, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, nothing's but impossible in a way. But for me, the strange thing was, is that like, like, I love superhero films. Mm-hmm. I watched them like a dime a dozen. But for the amount of films I've watched, I've never left with that feeling. So I didn't know you can have, and made me think, right, is this what I've been missing yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is this what, like, we, we can get from, like, bigging up our culture? Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, like, even, like, when it comes to, like, entrepreneurship or food or, mm-hmm. or, or things like that, or even, like, even, like, having you on the, here on the podcast, like, anytime, like, I see, a, like, a brother or a sister doing well, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, they're, they're someone's superhero for somebody else, you know? And I love Absolutely, to yeah. be the opportunity to, like, provide a platform for that person to, you know, promote and, you know, even put somebody else on. Do you know what I mean? Because, look, somebody could be listening to, to this right now and be like, you know what? I'm gonna start a little little um, Congolese um, pop up mm-hmm. down in Borough Market, mm-hmm. and uh, it was down to Princess. You know who knows? Yeah, you never know. You, you never know. know. Absolutely, yeah. So, so let's let's talk about. I'm gonna dive into the future, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna re re rewind. Okay? Yeah. Cool. So in the future, I'm just curious. Like, what's the like future plan? Where where do you where do you want to go? What do you? Do you know what do? the thing is? Yeah, when mm-hmm. you're starting a uh, a blog yeah you're kind of it's kind of like a brand there's loads of things that you can do so i've got loads of ideas i just like don't know what to start now so i've got like um doing cooking classes like actually have you, you started know, cooking classes i want to do cooking classes like yeah. um getting like a kitchen space and get people to you know, to come and show them my, you know, my food culture yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like that. I really want to do that. And I've got other things that I'm still thinking about, but um, it will still come up, you know, eventually to, to see exactly what I want to do. So, so, yeah. so on that, there's a great place um, called The Cooking Project. Have you heard of that? No. So they, they're, they're a really good venue. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few people doing pop-ups there at the moment but it's a kitchen space with i guess a seating area mm. so you can do like your pop-up restaurant in there and it's just designed for that that's really good um cool. i reached out to them you know their their pricing seems quite reasonable mm-hmm. um you know so you know i guess I, i've been cooking up something as well yeah. so um who knows i may may see you down there exactly you just never you know, know. Uh, make sure you shout me when you do your event i will want to come <sighs> absolutely. taste absolutely yeah definitely i'm actually going to this course as a food business course okay so i'm studying um you know, eventually by the end of it, I should have my business plan ready. So to see exactly the direction that I want to go into. Okay. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to that. But oh, it's just so many ideas. That's the, the issue with having s- loads of ideas because like you can be doing one thing, yeah. but you're delaying the other things. You're like, oh my gosh, I need to do, you know, plan B. Mm. When plan A is not getting anywhere, you go back to plan B and you're just not getting anywhere. You're just going back and forth, back and forth. So um, this course is really helping me to, to see exactly the direction that I want to take this brand into if you know what i mean so um yeah i'm looking forward to that so i guess anybody listening i guess to perhaps try and provide some value to the audience that you know they're looking at what you do they want to follow in your footsteps like what what advice would you give to them um in terms of let's say they they want to be put their brand out there they want to promote it on 
because you're on Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, you have your blog, you have your YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go deep into each individual yeah, one, yeah. but just on a broad sense, like mm-hmm. advice for somebody that's thinking about it. Well, I would say stop thinking about it. Just do it. Mm. You know, because sometimes like we have we have the best ideas. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. They've got such amazing ideas, but they're just not doing the work. Just go for it. Whatever you want to do, just open an Instagram a page or open a YouTube page, whatever it is, or a blog. Just start doing it. Because the more you start to think about it, you overthink it, it will never get done. Trust mm. me. I've been there, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you want to do something, just just do it. Just do it. That's 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 great advice. Um, put one foot in front of the other, and then yeah yeah you eventually know. you'll be like it's so easy why didn't i why didn't i start i think the hardest thing is to start 100 percent. it's the hardest thing once you start it's easy to carry on especially if it's the thing that you're passionate about yeah because yeah. a lot of times that like, we want to do things that everyone want everyone's are doing but it's not what we're passionate about. For example, I can be doing hair because there's a lot of females out there doing mm-hmm, hair. Mm-hmm. I can be doing makeup. There's a lot of females out there doing makeup. But if I do it, would I still keep doing it? Do you what know? do you mean? In terms of, say, for example, I start a YouTube channel doing hair and makeup. Yeah, yeah. And uh, eventually I'm like, oh, the editing. Oh, oh, okay, the okay, editing okay, takes okay. time. The editing takes time. And if you're not passionate about it, it's easy to give up. It's like, why why am I keep doing this? You know what I mean? I think you raised like a very good point because Mm. not everybody may be aware, but like the opportunities online are just endless. They're crazy. And like, I see opportunities out there that I might not necessarily touch. Yeah similar to what you said like there's there's people out there you know making like buckets like selling hair or like doing the makeup yeah, video yeah. or da, da 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 and you have a very good point because like if it's something you're not genu- gen generally interested in yeah so for example on that on myself like mm. i was looking around i was trying to find a niche like before i started this maybe like 18 months ago mm. or something like that and i was like okay nobody's really hitting up breakfast do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just like in like an Instagram breakfast page, yeah. a brand around breakfast. Let me let me let me jump on that. I started it like traction was going well, mm-hmm. whatever. But it's like after a while, I was like, how excited am I about breakfast? Yeah, and it's right yeah. through those moments in time when it's like I need to edit this, I need to chase this person, I need to arrange that. If you don't love it, it's just hard to give up. You're not gonna bother. Trust me. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's the truth. So let's let's. Now we're going back, back in time. Back, back, back. Yeah, let's just go back in time. So like um, you said, you were born in Congo. Mm-hmm. Through your, we're not going to go too deep, but through your childhood, like what kind of food, I guess, did you eat while you were growing up in Congo? One thing I must say, you have to try this, yeah. yeah. Rice and pondu. Pondu is cassava leaves. Okay. Oh my gosh! I posted a picture of it on my Instagram uh, last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like amazing. Whenever my mom makes it, I just love it. Like pondu and rice and fish, you know, on the side. So wait, this wait, wait. Let me say this right. Pondu. Pondu. Is P P O N D U. Pondu. 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 Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So with the pondu. Mm-hmm the rice like what do they what what do you do to it okay so with the pondu you cook it with like palm oil with fish you know you add all this season what kind know. of fish are you talking about you, do you know what i make it it makes it different you can add like um uh what do you call it uh dried fish dried fish okay yeah, yeah dried fish into it you can add wait i saw you throw some dried fish in a bin yesterday oh don't get me started with that dried fish <laughs> that actually got on my nerves what was wrong with that okay so i've been I've been on a hunt. I've been looking for this type of fish, yeah. yeah, yeah. We call it uh, bitoyo in okay. Lingala. So I don't really know what you call this in English. So um, I bought it in Belgium and uh, I made it with okra. It was so delicious. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why I didn't bring some with me back yeah, in the yeah. UK. 
So I've been going to Congolese shop like a lot of time. So they're probably thinking, who's this weirdo coming here asking for the same question over and over again? Because they don't have the fish. So um, the other day I was doing shopping and I saw this um, fish. It kind of looks like here. It's called lizard fish. Have you heard of it? No, no, no. I haven't I haven't heard of it. Yeah, it was just some. But funny I saw thing. it on the packet. It was on your stories, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I thought, okay, it smells it smells similar. So let me give it a try. So yesterday, okay, I was getting so excited. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this. I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this. So hopefully it tastes exactly like Bitoyo that I had in um Belgium. So I start to boil it. Oh my days, this smell. It smells so bad. And then the taste of it, because b- the bit toyo is a bit salty. Okay. I think um, it's, uh, what do you call it? T- I think it's tilapia, but oh, okay. it's um, smoked and it's salty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it should be that. But um, that that was the closest uh, fish that I could get. So it was, it was just a no-no. I was like, I'm putting this in a bin. It did not taste right. It was hard. It was just... It was just a no-no. It was, sure. yeah, luckily I had a backup. Oh, <laughs> you had, had the backup of yeah. the fish you actually wanted to eat? Oh, you mean the backup no, no, dish? a backup dish, basically. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I just used any type of, any salt fish that I had uh, in my fridge. So I made, you know, okra with it. So, yeah, okay. I was good to go. <laughs> but I was a bit disappointed, though, because I was looking forward to that. But I'm still hunting for this bitto in London. <laughs> I'm still hunting for it. Well, you know what? We're we're gonna have some comments. Uh, have a comment section for this podcast. So yeah. if anybody knows where to find this fish, yes. hit <laughs> us up on the comment. Uh, use hashtag Black Food Tales. Yeah, and uh, yo, don't worry, we'll find your fish. I hope so. I hope so. Come on, listeners, let's yeah. let's uh, let's help Princess get her fish. <laughs> um, so yeah, go back to the dish we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Pondu. 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 Um, so those are the kind of fish that you can use. Mm-hmm. So with the rice, what do you do to the rice? Okay, with the rice, it's just plain rice. You just boil oh, plain okay. rice. Yeah. Because with plain rice... What kind rice, of rice are we talking about? Basmati. Basmati, okay. Yeah. So with plain rice, you can manipulate it. You can add anything. Do you know what I mean? You can eat a side of anything. So we serve it like this. You put rice and you put pondu on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And you put a bit of a bili bili. What's bili bili? Which is like... Um, Spicy sauce, chili sauce. Okay. Yeah, my meal. I have to have it, man. So wait, what? What do you? How do you make this chili? <laughs> Just chili. Oh, it's on my YouTube channel. Oh, so, okay, yeah, okay. I've got everything. So basically, you just put Scotch bonnet in the blender. You just chop some onions, and you just a bit of water. So yeah, so you can have a bit of liquid. You blend it and you put a bit of salt when it's done. You mix it all together. A bit of oil. You put it in the fridge whenever you want to eat. Uh, your meals, you can just have it aside. You know what's amazing <laughs> when I hear you speak? It's yeah. like when the more people I speak to about, I guess, what they they, they eat at home, home, mm-hmm. everybody's got something that slightly overlaps with something else. Yeah. Um, but it's just amazing to hear that everybody's got their take on something. And it just means that like this foodie world is just so rich of different alternatives oh, and things so to true. try. Yeah. And things like that. Okay, so what what else did you, I guess, kind of eat when you, you were growing up and stuff? Well, we also ate oh, so loads of things like uh, ngai ngai. What's that? Uh, ngai ngai is a, uh, oh, what is it again? Oh, my days, is actually gone. I just, uh, I spoke Should I about Google it? it? We got Paral Google. Do you know what? Yeah, I, oh, do you know, I feel so bad. I actually know this. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, do you know what? Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, what How do you spell it? it? Yeah, ngai ngai. How do you spell it? Uh, N. Yeah. G. Yeah. A. Yeah. I. Yeah. Space. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I see it. Yeah. So wait, I'm gonna hide it from you. Uh, <laughs> do you know I feel so bad? I don't want you to tell me. You don't I want just to tell wanna you. say it myself because I know I know it. I just mentioned it the other day. Oh, okay. Where is it? Do you want me to give you ah, hints? Ah, Brazil leaves. So yeah. this this looks slightly different. I don't know if this is the same thing. I bring up something that. Something guy with fried fish. Is this it? Do you know if you go on Google Image, it'll Google be image, much yeah. better. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's something like that. Something like this like one that. here, yeah. yeah. It's called Rosal Leaves. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you cook it with um you can cook it with anything with fish. You can cook it with um like um So what can you meat. have this by itself? No, normally when we cook stuff like this, we have it with uh, something on the side. It can be fufu, 
Okay. It could be something that we call kwanga. What? What's kwanga? <laughs> kwanga is a cassava dumpling, like cassava dough. Oh, you make dumplings out of it? Yeah. So okay. It's not the dumplings that you think, you know, okay. it's a bit, because your your uh, Jamaican dumplings is, is a bit moist, isn't it? No? Uh, the boiled ones. The boiled ones yeah, is a bit moist. The fried yeah, ones. Yeah, this is not the fried. This is boiled. It's, it's boiled, but not directly inside water. You wrap it with um with oh, banana leaves. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. my days. I think it's tasty, man. It? <laughs> it's so tasty. Like, um, When's your pop-up? Like, I know. Me. Do you know what? Everyone's asking me that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People ask me... Um, Everyone asks me, like, do you have a restaurant? Mm. Do you um, do you deliver? Da, 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 da. When are you going to open your restaurant? I get this a lot of times, mm, every mm. time. I even got two yesterdays. Someone, you know, uh, commented on my on my Instagram um, picture saying, when are you going to have your restaurant? When are you going to have this? Do you know what? It's so easy to just say it, but the process it is long. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess the only reason why I'm pausing like that yeah. is, uh, so I'm not a chef. Mm. Um, I'm not a cook by by any means. I'm a person that that like I'll see a recipe. I like to follow different yeah, recipes yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, having said that, I have had a restaurant in the past, mm. oh. and uh, it wasn't here; it was abroad. Okay. Uh, I'd had like a, a Caribbean restaurant, but the only reason why I, I guess I'm I'm nodding slowly and agreeing with you because it is a different world from just cooking for the, like for, for for pleasure yeah, yeah. versus um you know have to price every dish business you yeah. have to yeah. like it is it is a, it, a slightly different beast to deal with and stuff so um yeah don't 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 rush into anything yeah one you thing know. i don't like is rushing to things because i've done that in the past it didn't do me good so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's what that's the main reason why i'm going to this business um course just to find out exactly the direction i want to take this thing uh, this uh, brand into so we'll mm. see good luck good we luck well, i don't think you'll need it but you know good luck oh you don't know thank you <laughs> i'm sure you'll we be just see. fine yeah um okay so you've i guess talked about some of um the dishes that you liked mm -hmm. and stuff like that like where did your foodie influence come from like who's your north star in like this foodie world what in terms of congo congolese or anyone in general so we'll start with Congolese mm -hmm. and then we'll go broader. Like, was it someone on TV? Was it a family member? It's a family or? member. Okay. It's my mum. Okay. My mum loved cooking. My mum was always in the kitchen. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. she just loved cooking. And that's why, that's how I got, you know, into cooking. You know, I'll tell you a story, yeah? Go on. What we used to do uh, back in Congo. So the cooking when you're cooking something, it was a bit different. It's not like you have an actual kitchen, you have like a stove and uh, cook it from electri electricity or gas. So you have like, um, I can't remember what you call it. We used to call it mbambula. mbambula. So you basically have this thing and you put like uh, charcoal and you light it up. You Does it look like a big, not a pot, but it's a big yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a very yeah, it's like a round thing. I, I know what you, you cook, mean, you but I don't know outside. how to. Describe. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah yeah, 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 it's like that. So whenever my mom is cooking, you know, you have the, those cans, like tomato tomato yeah, cans. Yeah, yeah. So uh, she'll cook, and then you know the tomato can should be in the bin. So what I used to do, this is very, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this if you're from Congo. So um, I used to dig the ground, and I use some of the coal and put it on the ground. Uh, in inside the ground and um, I'll try to cook check you know see what she's doing and I'll be cooking as well with that can that small can oh, yeah in the, as that's yes. your mini pot yes in okay. the pot so you know like when you chop your onions you have those left left over them small yeah, 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 small yeah, yeah. ones you put in the bin but I'll actually you know get the can and see what my mom's doing I'll be doing that is so, it yeah okay. I'll be doing that and uh, a lot of people have done that yeah, around me um my my siblings, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure um, my family members done that and had friends doing that. I think it was just a culture thing, so, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. um, cooking is so important in my culture. It's just so important as a female. Why, why, why? Because um, we look at it as a female, it's good for you to cook. Okay, because I only it's on a pause. I'm curious, like, because you're going to have some angry people the same now. I know, I know. When you said ang female, why yeah. is it important okay. as a female to cook? So it's just a culture thing. It's not for everyone. It's not being forced, you know? Like, um, we just fought 
culturally we look at it like this if you're a woman and you cook it's nice it's like um when you get married you know you'll be able to look after your husband you're able to look after your kids that is culturally that's mm. just the way our culture is mm. and this is not being forced you know sure, that sure, you sure. have to do it but this is just our culture and um that's why food really helps me to connect to my culture if you know what i mean and i love cooking mm. you know um i'm pretty sure um uh, growing up you know you have family members like when their mothers are cooking, they're not going to be around and check, mm. you know, because sometimes your mom's supposed to call you when she's in the kitchen cooking. Oh, so, so you learn as you so go. So you up. learn okay, as you cool, go. Cool. But um, yeah, so she'll call you every now and then, not all the time, like he's not forced. Mm. But is but I used to do it by choice in a way. I don't know what it was, but um, yeah, from a very young age, I was just so interested in uh, cooking, basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That was you found your passion yeah. um, from young yeah. and stuff like that. So okay. So your mom, I guess, was your north star initially. She she sparked mm-hmm. the interest. So as that sparked that flame for cooking and being a foodie grew, mm-hmm. I guess who who now maybe is like like who do you look this up to? This person is not Congolese. I, I I love her. I absolutely adore her. Uh, her name is Lorraine Pascal. Okay. She's amazing. Do you know her? No, no, oh no. Oh my days, you need to check her on Instagram. She used to be a model and uh, she started cooking uh, like around the age of 30 ish. Okay. She's just literally amazing. I love her cooking. And I recently been uh, got, um, someone gave me a gift. My partner gave me a gift of, um, of How her book. Can you spell book. her name? Uh, yeah, let me spell it. I guess for those listening, that this is. Oh, Lorraine. Okay, yeah, L-O-R-R-A-I-N-E-P-A-S-C. This one here. There she is. Oh, sorry, P-A-S-C-A-L-E. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, don't, you know her now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's amazing. I've, I've seen... Okay, so I've seen her stuff. I didn't know her yeah, name. Yeah, 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 her. Okay. She, yeah, I love her cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely seen her. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't really know her work that mm-hmm. that that well. Um, but I have definitely seen her or yeah. come across like yeah. her material and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, like, what what is about her that stands out? Cause she's just she's just so friendly. I don't know. She seems so like genuine. Like she seems so um, positive, and uh, I just love her cooking. You know, mm-hmm. I once saw her on. Um, um, on a show that she made this trifle thing, uh, strawberry trifle. Oh my gosh! Like I just felt so hungry. Yeah, like ever yeah. since I just been following her on Instagram and everything. <laughs> you know, I just find her amazing. Cool. So, like with all that you're doing and everything like that, like who? Well, maybe this might be personal, uh, but like I was gonna ask, like who's your pillar? In like because it's it's a lot of work. Yeah everything that you're doing like well like how like 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 do, do you have a mentor or do you have a, a pillar or someone that you turn to or like what like i must say my partner mm-hmm. my partner yeah he's definitely my pillar um he's just he's just supportive obviously sure. as in a relationship we support each other and yeah, stuff. yeah yeah so yeah definitely it is him amazing hands down <laughs> you know what that's that's always a positive thing because yeah. if you're in a relationship that's not supportive of your dreams and goals, that it just makes everything. Oh, he's harder. so supportive. He gave he got me a book, <laughs> okay. you know, of her because I really like her. So um, he just yeah surprised me and he got me a book. Um, yeah, her book. So yeah, it's just amazing. Cool. Very supportive. So now I guess I want to dive into like the work that you're doing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's start with uh, YouTube. You you are uh, officially a YouTuber. Uh, I don't like that word. You're not. Do you know what? I don't know. You don't like the word. Do you, Why? I don't know if. Do I like that word? It's funny. I don't really consider. Do you find it limiting? I don't. I don't really consider myself as a YouTuber. Do you find <laughs> it? Um, 
why 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 first of all i don't know it's so weird it's so weird like i even ask my question myself questions like why don't you <laughs> you know for me like youtuber is somebody that's pumping out content on youtube regularly yeah. that has like you, what you got 10k right no what how many i've got like 6.2 6.2 Six point two. That's a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's people. Who are you saying that like that? <laughs> There's people out there with like. Um, no, I got fourteen right now. No, no, less than that. I think I got twelve. Yes, I have twelve. Mm. So you're like the, the, there's an ocean between me and you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And there's people who ha- haven't even started yet. You know. So I mean, say when you say you're not a YouTuber, are you comparing yourself to people like millions of followers and stuff? Do you know before, I'm not even going to lie, I used to before. Yeah, obviously, it's just it's, as a human being, you know, I used to. But I'm so glad I don't anymore. But in terms of YouTuber... So wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's share that. Maybe you can help educate someone right now. Why did you stop looking? Why is it important for somebody else not to watch that? Because everyone's journey is different. Because there's no point of me looking at someone who's got more subscriber than me, you know, because you also have to look, when did it start? I can't just, you know, go on YouTube and start, like, it's been a year I'm on YouTube, for example, I've got a thousand followers, and I'm looking at someone who's been on YouTube for, like, five years, they've got, like, a hundred K followers, uh, subscribers. I can't, I can't compare that, because they started before me. You know what I mean? They started before me, and everyone's journey is different, so I just came to a point that I have to focus on my journey, this is my journey. I am on this journey, like, without comparing. Because one thing I realized, the more you start to compare yourself with others, when you're looking outside, is that you just lose track, you know? You just lose track. So um, you just focus on that, but you're slacking on your own work, you know? So I just, I just made up my mind just to focus on what I am doing. You know, everyone's journey is different, you know? Even though you might have 14... Uh, uh, for subscribers you might get more just overnight you never know more than me you just never know everyone's journey is different yeah no 100% um, do you watch Gary V? yeah you love oh, Gary V yeah. yeah 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 Gary V like uh, it, I can't even describe yeah, yeah. Um, anybody listening definitely 100% check out Gary V um, if you're into like building content and yep. putting out yeah. stuff so one thing Gary says which I thousand percent believe in, which has made me, I guess, a bit more calmer about like what I do and stuff. Is that um, depth over width mm. kind of thing? So like, it's great. For example, let's say having a million followers, but I rather now have a hundred followers if I have more depth with them. I.e., I'm more engaged with them. I yeah. interact. Yeah. You know, there's there's actual community there yeah. rather than just a meaning that they they don't really watch my content mm-hmm. they're there or they're mm. about exactly. kind of thing exactly you know um depth of width any 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 day mm-hmm. you know i would take so um yeah i'm happy i think it's 12 i need to double check but i'm happy yeah. on my 12 subscribers but hey you know it will grow there you <laughs> it go. will grow we all started at zero yeah, and zero. that's the thing everybody forgets you know mm. that um yeah everybody body started somewhere and stuff like that when you so when you first did your first video and stuff, was it easy to just dive on camera? No, it was so weird. <laughs> so like your first 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 stuff, did you yeah. put it out? Yes, um, I done it. I actually filmed it on my uh, iPad. Okay. And uh, I edited it on my iPad, and I was like, I'm just going to do it for fun. Sure. And sure, then I sure. got people responding, and I thought, oh, okay. So I thought, yeah, why not just you know put. Um, recipes out there and just see what people think because i've always been cooking i used to do it on snapchat you know before youtube actually are you still on snapchat yeah i'm on snapchat but it's uh private but i used to do it on snapchat like um showing my friends and families and they'll just ask me for recipes that's really good and da, 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 da. and then i just thought okay maybe i should just you know open an instagram page that was actually my first um thing that I, I i started instagram page so from there i was like, oh let me try youtube you know so just so of across like all these three channels and stuff like where do you find like you're getting like the most i was about to say enga- okay let me use the word engagement first where are you getting the most engagement hmm. that's a funny question to be honest because um instagram has changed i don't know if you realize 
uh, before I used to get a lot of engagement on Instagram, but you know, with the algorithm thing, yeah, yeah, it yeah. just changed completely. So right now, I'll, I'll say Instagram if still because I've got more followers on Instagram than YouTube. Um, How many you got on Instagram? Nine thousand four hundred. Okay. Yeah, on Instagram, so is um, is different. So I think I'm getting more uh, engagement on Instagram, I should say. Yeah. Okay. But the algorithm is changing. So, yeah, one thing you'll be getting more engagement then it just goes down. Is like it have to be work. You have to be posting, posting, posting. That's one thing I don't like. I don't want to be on social media all the time. You know, I don't want to be on it, on it, on it. Because otherwise I won't be doing work, you know, getting content out. So, yeah. So Instagram should be the one. So is that your preferred social media? Um. I would say... Are you on Pinterest, by the way? Yeah, but I hardly use it. Okay. Yeah, I, I just post it here and there. Because I know, like, for a thousand percent, like, I need to get on Pinterest. Because yeah. I know, especially for food, mm -hmm. um, like, Pinterest is, like, extremely high engagement. And I've been told that, like, Pinterest, like, uh, the click-through rate on, like, Pinterest is really, really high. Mm. Um, I haven't taken advantage of it yet. But, like, people use Pinterest almost like as a search engine and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I need to get all over that. But I had, I, 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 only have so many hands. Yeah. And right now I'm, I'm one-man band. That's the thing, see. That's the thing. Mm -mm -mm. that's the thing one thing I that's the reason why I haven't been on it on it on Pinterest because yeah, yeah. I I want to put my effort into not just one thing yeah probably one thing you know because when I'm doing a million things it's like it's not really getting anywhere if you know what I mean like I said before yeah, jumping yeah, yeah. on plan A B you know going back and forth back and forth is pretty hard. No, hundred percent. Like even with myself and trying to like build like this this brand around like Black Food Club and stuff, I've almost had to like reset and do like okay, this is how much I can do this week. Mm -hmm. Then let me add, and then next week this is how much I can do, and then let me add. Mm -hmm. Like like for me, like the like I for like the longest. I'll tell other people, yeah, you should vlog. Da 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 da. But you know how hard it is to post yeah. content, yeah. Yeah. podcast. Yeah. I had the vlog and you're doing it and I know like a thousand percent I need to be vlogging exactly. and I'm I'm not doing it. Like I need like you know what D Rock is. Like mm. I need like my own D Rock mm. but um I don't know when that's gonna happen. But like yeah, I need to, I need to vlog yeah. kind of thing. Like I really need to, to, to jump on that. Yeah. Why don't you just film your your what do you call it? Your journey. Wouldn't it be easier? So, yeah, like, I need to... So, funny enough, so, like, i got an event coming up next month. Um, my intention was to film the in-quote process of mm -hmm. me leading up to that event. Um, the only thing is that it's been, like, a lot of that work is, like, computer stuff. Mm. So, it's, like, like that's not interesting. Yeah, Do you know what I, mean? what I mean? But with that said, I'm going to go see the venue tomorrow. Mm. Uh, taking the chef down there to, like, so he can plot his menu and stuff. That'll be interesting just to go, you know, film and, and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, like, when it's video, it just has to be engaging and stuff like that. Um, so back on you, because mm -hmm. you're the star of the show today. Um, we've spoken a bit about, like, Instagram. Like, YouTube, um, you've said that you get more engagement on Instagram. Although you're still doing, you know, in, in my eyes, you're still very, doing very well on like YouTube. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice or tips for people that like that want to be content creators on YouTube and stuff like that? Yeah, just pretty much the same. Like I said before, just start if you have an idea. Just start and just be consistent. Okay, cool. So we've done like the the, the high level. Mm -hmm. Let's get like nitty gritty tips. Like, is there like, for example, like um not hashtags what do you call it is it tags tags like tips with either like tags yeah. or like how you pick what recipes to pick or like anything you do with talking to the camera just like nitty gritty tips do you have any 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 secrets yeah. maybe secrets you maybe can't share them I don't well, know well it's not really secrets but um, it's just like like you said the hashtags and also your thumbnail Thumbnail, okay, is important. thumbnail is important. Yeah, that really attracts people to click on it. Mm. You know, if you just film a video and uh, your thumbnail is not good enough, you might have a really good video. That happened to me in the past, but my thumbnail wasn't good enough, so people weren't clicking as much. And also your title as well. You so just, just on that, you notice a dramatic change as soon as you change the, ch 
soon as you change your thumbnail, my people thumbnail. start clicking yeah. more. My thumbnail, yeah. Because before, do you know when like when you post a video on YouTube, yeah, and it just gives you your thumbnail straight yeah, to yeah, it automatically. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes before I used to leave it like that, but now I actually like create my own thumbnail and then just you know upload it. Would you make a thumbnail, sir? Uh, Pig Monkey. I use Pink Monkey. Yeah. Okay. I use um, well, I did. I did use Canva for mm. a bit. Okay. Uh, Canva's real cool. Mm. That's a free. You know Canva? I've heard of it. Okay, so that's a free. Well, it's generally free. There's a, like it's got lots of templates and stuff. There's a few uh, that you have to pay for, but I mm. think like some of them you might pay like a dollar, mm. and you can edit it as much as you want for oh, twenty four cool. hours. I'll check it out. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. Pink Monkey is like five pounds. Uh, five pounds per month that okay. I'm paying. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I know. I I know of it. I'm just not not used it yet. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Okay. Okay. And so, where else are you, apart from Instagram and YouTube? Um, Facebook. Facebook. How is Facebook working for you? Right. Actually, do you know with Facebook the way? Right now, I see the improvements because um, you know you have that like groups, that like food groups and stuff. Mm-hmm. So there's this group that um, my cousin... The private groups. Yeah, private groups, yeah. 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 Like cooking uh, private groups and stuff. So there's this um, page that, this group that I follow, and you can post your your stuff there. So when people like it, they can click on your thing and follow you from there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's really good. And um, this group, they they promote a lot of uh, Congolese recipes as well. And I like to see some of other people's recipes because... um, What's it called, uh, it's called La Recette uh, de, co- de oh, it's French. Yeah. It's okay. French. But there's other people from London that uses it. In English? In, yeah, in English. But it's rare. Okay. It's rare. So okay. you can still, you know, sometimes just feed your eyes with those <laughs> pictures. You know, sure. Those um, food pictures. I'm curious though, like with all these recipes and all of this stuff, like how, how do you remember like all of this stuff? Like there's a lot. How how do you remember all of this? Do you have a black book or something? Do you write these down? I write it down. So, okay, f- f- uh, it's good that you mentioned that. With the mm-hmm. recipes, when I learned, when I first learned how to cook with uh, from my my family, yeah, um, they didn't teach me, like, for example, if you're cooking something, you put, like, a tablespoon of this uh, seasoning, you, just, uh, you leave it for this amount of time and stuff like that. There was none of that. Mm-hmm. and uh, But it was still good, you know? It's just like, it was just like, it was like magic, you know. You're not calculating things. So you, you, okay, let you finish. Mm-hmm. But go on. You're not calculating things, but um, the food will still taste nice. So then I realized I was like, in order for me to teach someone how to cook our culture food, I have to see it as like, uh, like you never, you don't know our culture food, but I want to teach it the way that you can understand and the food will taste exactly the same. So what I started doing is when I'm cooking, I'll write down like, oh, I've put this amount of seasoning and that. Mm. So I'll write it down and mm. that's how I start to memorize it. So when I do my videos, um, you know, when I practice and then eventually I come up with a recipe and it, I'll film it, you know, based on what I, you know, uh, what I practice so that the recipes are, you know, at the right way, basically. So it can taste the same. So that's, uh, I won't call them out, some family members, that's what I struggle with. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, I want to memorize this, but it's like, oh, just keep just pouring. Just put this, put a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but it's going to taste different every time. <laughs> exactly. That was my, yeah. And then I'll be like, you know what, like, um, but I, I want to make it taste the same. And then you yeah. try to explain it and they're yeah. like, no, I don't cook like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so, but no, I get And I it's get. funny, I went, even though we didn't cook, the food always tastes nice. Mm. It always mm-hmm. tastes nice, but it's not always the same. True. This, true, true, true. Because true. if you're using different seasoning, you know, everything's in your head here and there. The food is not going to taste the same all the time. So I came to a point and I was, I want my food to taste the same all the time or a bit more, you know, the same. Mm-hmm. So that's why I start to measuring. Whenever I'm cooking something new, I have my, my notebook or, you know, just writing down. So I put a bit of this, a bit of that. And uh, that's why, you know, my food would taste the same most of the times. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, I want to talk a bit about your foodie side. Um, where are you passionate about right now? Like whose food or like have you been somewhere and you're like, oh, this food was so tasty or like what? Like 
it, it doesn't even have to be like in quote black mm-hmm. food African Cumbrian just like where have you been recently and it's just like are you already smiling you've already yeah. thought of something I already know where do you know what paella oh you like paella oh, yeah I love it I love it where did you have some good one uh, in Barcelona you have to go to the country okay. <laughs> yeah okay okay, okay. I had a paella. It was so good. I actually went to a cooking class to learn how to make it in Barcelona. Okay. It was so good. So, yeah, I love, love paella. You know, I love it too. I've not had it actually there. Mm-hmm. I know there's like this stall in uh, Bar Market. Mm-hmm. When they cook, they're the queue for this oh, paella. It's so yeah. long kind of thing. Uh, I love it. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's never mm. gonna taste as, as good as you had it, like in Barcelona. Yeah, stuff. I'm gonna give it a try to see, to see. But um, you know, the people say that if you want to, I was watching your podcast. Mm. Uh, the lady mentioned that if you want to know the authentic taste, you have to go to the country. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. in the country, it just it's just more authentic. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. But, okay, so why you touch on that authenticity thing like that? Where's your take on like keeping things traditional versus like I was about to say taking and improving, but that's probably harsh. But taking something and adding a local twist to it, mm. let's say if you're not in the native country, do you think that dishes should be kept native or played with or like what? What's your opinion on that? The thing is. Um, I like to keep the food the way it's cooked. Okay. You know, in terms, especially the way it's present, you know, the way we present it. Like, for example, like I mentioned to you before, like with the rice and you put pondu on top Mm. and uh, you put like fish or meat on the side. But if you want to keep it local, then you have to do it just fancy and you put pondu a bit different. Mm. I've tried that. But the thing is, that's more, that's not really authentic. That's not really showing people how we eat it in our country. Mm. So... But in terms of uh, the certain things that you can change that I was thinking, probably because some, some of the dishes that y- you can put a lot of palm oil, probably reducing the palm oil, you know, reducing the, the ingredients. But in terms of the presentation, I just like it to be kept the same, to be honest, and cook a bit the same, but just reduce palm oil because obviously too much palm oil ain't good for you, is it? So, yeah. Sure, okay. You know, the first time like I... I really realized there was a divide in two camps. Mm. So like, you know, this meetup that we, we met up for well, the first meetup that I had, uh, it was purely a pure convenience. I arranged to go to Turtle Bay. You know Turtle Bay? No, I, 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 I remember you went there. Yeah, That's so the it's, a, it's a Caribbean spot. Mm. Um, I giggle when I say that only because when I arranged it there, the, the messages I got of, of hate you really? know like 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 people were like it's not traditional it's not da 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 how can you you know and mm-hmm. people some those some of the people left the group oh wow um and that's when i realized so it's funny i realized two things here yeah um which might sound funny one i realized that um you know there's there's obviously people that are you know mm-hmm. very almost take this to like a religious kind of like mm-hmm. outlook mm-hmm. on like how their food should be kind of thing and secondly funny enough i realize i've got something yeah i've got something that people are really passionate about and it just made me want to it gave me more fire actually more passion to you know explore this and like share the tale of both camps you know because yeah. there's people out there that like to just do something different put a little spin on it and other people that like to keep things traditional uh me as a foodie as long as it tastes good i'll eat i'll eat it all do you know what i mean so um i'm all for just putting like great food on the map so you know people from other cultures can try it that's uh that's all i'm about wow that kind of thing so with that said i'm about to hit you with the uh quick fire Rapid answer questions. Are you are you ready? You good to go? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Which celebrity would you like to cook for? Ooh, Fali Pupa. Is that the one you mentioned earlier? <laughs> no. What's he's this a one? Congolese, um, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. He's Congolese. Yeah, Fali Pupa. He yeah. he's a Congolese uh, artist. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. What you kind of? Listen to his music. It's really good. I will. Yeah. I will check him out. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your best midnight snack? Oh, coconut peanut butter. Uh, coconut peanut. I love it. Coconut peanut? Yes. So what, what is that? How do you... Oh, my days. I bought it from... Um, I normally buy it from... Um, what do you call it? 
You know, oh, for this sure. whole interview, yeah, yeah, this is the first time you've been like moving around in your seat. <laughs> like, Look, I'm getting so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm getting so excited because it just tastes so good. Like, oh, you have to try it. coconut peanut. Ooh. Coconut peanut. That is yeah. the one. Is it really, really sweet? It's, it's, it tastes like peanut, but coconut flavor. Okay. It's so good. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I kind of already asked this to you, but like, what's your favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant is TGR Fridays. Really? Yeah, I love it. I love the steak. Yeah. Okay. I actually do, you know. <laughs> okay, that surprised me a bit. I know. <laughs> okay. What summer ingredient are you most excited about cooking with this year? With um. What summer ingredient? What did you? Oh, did you answer already? No, no. What did you say? <laughs> I said, "What was the question?" I said, "What summer ingredient are you most excited about cooking with this year?" This year. Yeah. Ooh, ingredient. I'll say all-purpose seasoning. All-purpose? Is that a summer ingredient? No. S- did you say summer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it maybe my, my, my English? Oh, summer. I what, what some ingredient? Oh, sorry. sorry. What some... summer ingredient? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Okay. I'm not quite sure. Maybe fruits. Or like, you know, some people actually say you shouldn't cook your fruits, but... Or mm. any... Actually, I'll say fruit. Uh, mango fruit. because okay. you do like um in my country we do like mango puree so oh, you okay. cook it and you know you put a bit of salt and uh um chili powder it tastes so good you know what's funny like before i came here i saw a picture on your instagram mm-hmm. of the mango chopped in slices with a sprinkle of seasoning on it mm-hmm. and i was looking because i've never seen that before yeah, yeah it's um, so good is it oh my gosh it's so is it good. hot and um, this the chili powder is really is hot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you have chili powder and salt, so yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, define good food. I'll say authentic, spicy <laughs> for me. Okay. I love spicy food. I know it's a bit it's so bad, but um, authentic, spicy, and uh, home cooked food. Home cooked, yeah. yeah. By all means, and what dish should everybody try before they die? Pondering rice or fumba, fumba and kwanga I mentioned. Oh, yeah, they have to try that. Cool, cool. So um, I guess I want to thank you for being our guest today on Black Food Tales podcast. I thank you for you... having me. Yeah, yeah, by all means. We were great guests. Thank you for uh, being our guest today. Mm-hmm. Tell everybody, tell the uh, Black Food Club where we can find you, like all your socials. You said it once, but, you know, tell them again okay we can find so you. you can find me on instagram at let's cook with l you can also find me on um, facebook youtube and pinterest same thing at let's cook with l cool 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 and just before we wrap it up mm-hmm. i would like you to suggest a dish that everybody needs to go out and try it could be congolese it could be from anywhere in the world what dish do people need to go out and try next week i keep saying it pondu and rice <laughs> okay cool and, oh pondu is just so good it's yeah. so good yeah cool perfect well you oh can. actually one th- other thing yeah, is taba and kwanga What's kwanga what? and taba so basically it's goat meat okay. yeah it's like uh wood grilled and yeah, yeah, kwanga yeah. which is cassava dumpling that i mentioned Definitely. Oh, yeah. can we find some of these recipes for some of these things on your? What with the taba? I I didn't make it um, the way it's made traditionally because um, you need to cook it outside okay. in the garden. But I made mine in the oven. Okay. Just for people that they don't have a garden, you yeah, know, yeah, they yeah. don't have those equipment. But yeah, you can use the same um, recipe. But if you want to, you know, wood grill it. Yeah, it's yeah. up to you, basically. So, yeah. All right, cool. For, for convenience, I'll make sure I link up to that yeah. uh, over in the show notes as well. If you want to check that out, head over to blackfoodclub.com four stroke zero zero five. Again, I want to thank you for being our guest today and uh, thank everybody for listening. Thank you.